question for you. Have you ever bickered with your partner or loved one over money? Of course you have. You are not alone. <laughs> Studies have shown it is the number one cause of conflict in relationships. So to help us learn how to fight about money, please welcome our financial expert, Bruce Celery. <laughs> So we're gonna fight about money. Oh aren't yeah, we? we're gonna learn how to do it well. Let's we are gonna because well. it's inevitable, right? Yes. People are going to fight. Now, as you prep for a fight, you also need to practice your finger pointing <laughs> and take care of your voice. Because if you're gonna <laughs> shout, you don't want to like break a vocal cord or something like that. That's right. There's this great new book called The Good Fight by okay. Leanne Davy. It's coming out soon, and she argues that conflict is really, really important. The metaphor she uses is uh, you know, credit card debt. If you don't pay it off, it builds and builds and builds, it compounds and it becomes much, much worse. She calls it the conflict debt. If you don't deal with it, it it builds and builds and builds and becomes much, much worse. You need to find a way to deal with it as it relates to your money. I just like this because it's not about being delusional. Yeah. It's about facing it head on and that's what you have to do. Yeah. If you know everyone's getting divorced because of money, yeah. don't put your head in the sand. Yes. So we You're have not Snow White. Yeah, the seven dwarves aren't going to sing up. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's coming from a different background. So for us, it happened to us early in our marriage. I realized, whoa, we're on different planets. Yeah. So Leo uh, grew up with nothing. And so for this man, money is everything. It's security, stability. He wants to make it so we can just sit on a mountain of it. Yeah, right. And, and I'm thinking, oh, no, money's about opportunity. And, and look at all the things we can do now because yeah. now we have some, some money. And I didn't grow up rich, but I had the Barbie camper. So right. it's like, we were That's fine. That's a lot, Barbie camper. We Did you have fine. an Easy Bake Oven? Yeah, I had the Easy Bake okay, Oven. Okay, well then. So, right, Made we might shade. as well be millionaires. Yeah. So uh, we went to a counselor early on in our marriage, and, and he set us straight right away. Well, he set Leo straight. <laughs> <laughs> he asked us a few questions. He said, do you rent or do you own? What's your financial trajectory been? And he asked us a few other things, and he said, you know what, Leo, you can actually chill. Right. You can relax a little yeah. bit. And I think ever since that conversation, we've gone so from great. here to here. We're way more closer now in our philosophies about money, but you got to nip it in the bud. Yeah, and what your counselor was able to do is Davy's tip number one, which is establish a line of communication. Because okay. so often in fighting, it's not a dialogue, it's a monologue, and volume yes. is raised here. So you <laughs> yeah. need to establish a line of communication. For people at home, they can use our conversation on City Line as a catalyst. Like, hey, I heard Bruce on City Line. Let's talk about money. He's so nice. He's kind of handsome. And then that begins <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing. Yeah. He's a great shirt. Uh, the second thing is to create a connection. And this okay. is so important. You need to underscore that you are allies. You are not adversaries. You want to find a way to be on the same page. That's right. That's so important because you, you both have hopefully the same goals. Yeah. And you need for this to stick together so that you can yeah. move forward. So what do you actually do, though? Yeah. If your partner is like spending too much or or the or the the reverse. So I'm gonna stay on this connection thing. Yeah. Is you ask questions. So okay. instead of asking the questions, why are you spending like a drunken sailor, you horrible <laughs> person who's driving us to ruin? Yes. You say, hey, like we're talking about spending. What's that about for you? Like an open-ended question, because it may, in the in the calm kind of way that that is asked, it may illuminate like stress or a power dynamic in the relationship, sleep deprivation. It could illuminate a whole bunch of different things, mm -hmm. and so you have a way to talk about that. That's not about that. that, 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 that. The okay. second thing about establishing a connection is a technique that has been around for a very long time. It's basically active listening. You're basically yeah. validating what the person says. So if you say to me, Bruce, you're spending too much. All I say back is, I hear that you're saying that I spend too much. Okay. And so I'm validating what you're saying. My mom used to do this in the like late 70s with us. It was infuriating, <laughs> but it totally works. It does. Because one of the things about being in a relationship is you're just not feeling heard. And yes. as contrived as it feels for someone to parrot back exactly what you said, you're like, wow. You get me, thank you, you finally get me. And that's really important. So establish okay. signs of communication, create a connection. Those are so two the first thing you're doing is you're actually trying to figure out the root of their spending situation. Yeah, and then. Because that, that's important, that's very telling. Yeah, right? and you're not defending or arguing, you're yeah. really starting to understand it because then the two of you can come together and work on contributing to a solution. As mm -hmm. you say, it's not about the money, typically, mm -hmm. it's about something else. So think about new parents. Being a new parent, you have so much on your 
your plate. Yeah. And for some new parents, it's like when you get down to what the spending thing is, it's it's the only time I have by myself. Yes. I go to the mall and I walk around the mall and no one is there and I just buy stuff, right? right. It's like this desperation. It's for me. It's for me. Mm -hmm. So the solution might not be, um, you know, don't spend anymore. It might be, we need to get you some self-care. So I am going to be captain of the household on Thursday nights. Every Thursday night, you do whatever you want. You go to a movie, you go out with a friend, you do something. Or I just make sure that you get six hours of uninterrupted sleep. Yes. So there are solutions that get to it in a bit of a different way. Okay. The, the other thing is that the, um, the, the solutions you come up with might not address the spending at all. It might be something totally different yeah. about communication or, you know, not feeling uh, like you're the gorgeous one in the relationship. So mm -hmm. it may be compliments that help your spouse save money and not spend so much. Who knows? Okay, you got to figure out what the root cause of it is. Yeah. Um, so you also say uh, you need to align on values. So get yeah. so sort of get in front of it. Which is kind of what you were talking about yeah. with Leo yeah. is uh, he's got a value about security. You've got a value about opportunity. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what money is for. Yeah. Second is set expectations. And this is very practical and very tangible. So for example, we are going to talk before either one of us spends more than $500 mm -hmm. uh, around decision making and there's mm -hmm. so often a lot of conflict around that especially where there's income disparity is like I make the money I make the decisions mm -hmm. mm, maybe that's not the best approach right so maybe right. you make the decision on grocery the, the decisions on groceries I make the decision on kids activities but we decide together on vacation so you right. have some way of saying that another thing that a lot of couples do that's really really helpful is they set aside a lump sum of money that they do not have to report on debrief on or talk about mm -hmm. maybe it's a hundred bucks maybe it's 200 bucks whatever it is so you you can go and do whatever you want with that, provided it's legal or legal-ish, mm -hmm. and then you don't have to you don't have to come back and talk about it. Mm -hmm. The the other expectation that I think is so important in uh, relationships is we don't keep secrets. Mm -hmm. We don't keep secrets. Mm -hmm. So that because that's really insidious. So the yeah. expectations piece is followed by regular check-ins. Some people have a money meeting and you know they do those whole thing which is great if you do mm -hmm. but basically what you're talking about is what's working yes. and what's not working and how do we kind of resolve that because as Davy says resolve the conflict when it is small. She would say that conflict is a part of a healthy relationship totally. and you're dealing with it when it's small so it doesn't evolve into this crazy big thing. There's so much shame tied to money, isn't there? Yeah, there really is. So if you spend a lot, I'm even like, I'm so hesitant to come home when I was talking to my producer about this. From the gym, I pay for a personal trainer. It's a lot of money, yeah. guys. Yeah. So when I come home and I'm like, so the money is about to come out for the yeah. personal trainer. Yeah. Like I feel this sort of, oh no, am I spending yeah. too much on myself? I'm already outside of the home and now I got this guy training me. Who do I think I am? Yeah, but am here's I a the princess? thing on this one. Are you okay with this? You have the benefit of just disrobing and saying, you're welcome. <laughs> work. I love you, Bruce.